Good afternoon. I'm Tad Bradley, the North American Sales and Marketing Representative for Imbello Safari Lodges in Zimbabwe. I'm going to take you through today the Imbello portfolio in Wangi National Park in Zimbabwe. A uh, short presentation just to give you the highlights of their four camps and how you can connect all uh, of the camps together for a comprehensive 10-day, nine-night safari in Wangi National Park. Starting off here on this slide, one of the must-do activities while visiting Zimbabwe is go on a walking safari. Zimbabwean professional guides are roundly considered to be some of the best, if not the best, walking guides on the continent of Africa. They have one of the longest and most rigorous training programs. And the guide there on your screen is Sib Sabanda. Sibs is our head guide for all of the Wangi properties. Sibs has been a wildlife guide in Wangi National Park uh, for over 20 years. He started his training with Conservation Corporation Africa, which became and beyond uh, down in the Pinda Reserve in KwaZulu Natal in South Africa. He then guided in Botswana for and beyond, and then subsequently became the head guide for the Wilderness Safaris Camps in Wangi which are our nearest neighbors in the southern part of the park. Sibs then came over to Imbello in about 2012 and has been with us ever since. Last year, he was named the best guide in Zimbabwe by the Zimbabwean Professional Guides Association, which considering how many incredible guides there are in Zimbabwe, that is obviously a very huge honor. We are honored actually to have Sibs on our team to be our leader of all of our young guides. He's an incredible mentor, mentor for those young guides that are uh, coming up through the Invelo system and will one day hopefully soon be professional guides themselves. And he's also just a, a really wonderful person and an incredible guide who our guests absolutely love. Zimbabwe uh, ge geographically is in Southern Africa, bordered by Zambia, uh, Mozambique, Botswana, and South Africa. Zooming in on the country itself and the Invelo properties, all four of Invelo's camps are inside Wangi National Park, 5,000 square miles of wilderness, one of Africa's great parks, often a, a forgotten park. If there are two things to take away from this presentation and to differentiate Imbello, it is these two things. The first is our focus on experiential safari activities. We love game drives, just like the next safari operator, and we do them exceptionally well with great vehicles, and obviously great guides but we really love to get our guests out of the vehicle where possible and immerse them in the African bush in different and, and in unique ways. So obviously walking safaris is a big part of any safari to Zimbabwe, but we go beyond that for things like yoga on the deck with the elephants at Nahimba Lodge in Northern Wangi or mountain biking with the elephants down at Josie Benini Camp in the far south of the park or our Elephant Express safari train, which I'll talk more about. Um, experiences like this, which are one of a kind, unique, and really do get guests uh, to experience Africa and Zimbabwe and Wangi uh, on a different level, a more immersive, a more intimate level. The second thing is the foundation of the company is in community-based tourism, and we have incredibly strong commitments and relationships with our local communities, and guests are able to participate uh, in these uh, kind of activities with our communities and come away with uh, a better appreciation for the challenges and the success that we've had in terms of helping communities that live on the border of the National Park. Wangi National Park, as I said, one of Africa's great parks, 5,000 square miles of wilderness with well over 45,000 elephants, one of, uh, if not Africa's greatest elephant preserve, maybe uh, Next to Chobe National Park in Botswana, our neighbor, these two parks and this area, trans-border area, is the largest uh, elephant preserve remaining in Africa with well over 200,000, 250,000 elephants in this region. Wangi, as I said, 45,000 elephants, but last year there were 50,000 visitors. Now this is a park of the same size of the Serengeti, so just a point of comparison, the Serengeti, same size park, had approximately 50, uh, 350 to 400,000 visitors last year compared to Wangi's 50,000. Kruger National Park in South Africa, slightly bigger than Wangi, and it had 1.7 million visitors. So those comparisons just show you the level of exclusivity, the fewer number of visitors, and the incredible remote experience that one can have when visiting 
Wangi National Park. We nearly have more elephants than visitors, which is an incredible statistic. Um, and again, a park that if you do have guests that are elephant lovers, it is a must visit because of those kind of experiences that you can have with elephants on foot, on mountain bikes, on our safari train, uh, or of course in our vehicles as well. Just over overview of the Mvelo portfolio in Wangi, we have four camps, Nahimba in the north or north central part of the park, Bomani and Camelthorn right in that southeast corner of the park, and Josie Benini camp in the far, far south, uh, the most remote camp in Wangi and, and quite possibly the most remote camp in Zimbabwe. This, is, this presentation is set up like an itinerary and, and like we would recommend that you combine our camps. There's several ways to do it. In this one, we're gonna start with Nahimba. Um, you would arrive into Victoria Falls International or if your guests are staying in Victoria Falls, they would then go by road, which is a five hour road transfer from Victoria Falls to the Northern Gate of the park, the Mbala Gate, and then a three hour game drive to Nahimba Camp. They can also fly to Giraffe Springs Airstrip, which is 20 minutes from camp, about a 45 minute scenic flight from Victoria Falls, three nights at Nahimba, and then take an our wonderful Elephant Express rail car down to either Bomani or Camelthorn Lodge, depending on which one they're staying at, for another three nights to experience an entirely different ecosystem in the south of the park, experience our community activities in the Chilocho communal land, and then uh, do an all day safari down to the far, far south, very remote Josie Benini camp. You can also fly that as well, and then spend three nights in this remote outpost um, and Wangi's most remote camp, and then finish with a flight, beautiful scenic flight back up to Victoria Falls International. So there's a wonderful 10 day, nine night safari immersed into the remote and nature of and the exclusivity of Wangi National Park. So we'll start this virtual tour of this itinerary, this remote exclusive and wild itinerary with Nahimba in the northern part of Wangi. Nahimba's nine tents are set around this water hole. This is a picture from October, the late dry season, when we're routinely seeing 500 to 1,000 elephants coming into camp to drink from our water hole, as well as from our pool right here at main, the main lodge. This is a, a picture taken a few weeks ago of some of the elephants coming into Nahimba Lodge during the afternoon. And we consistently see you know, hundreds, like I said, 500 to even a thousand elephants as we get into the dry season. Um, from about June through early November or mid-November when the first rains come, those numbers just continue to build and build as the season, as the dry season goes on. And this is a common thing where guests have decided not to even go on a game drive and just enjoy an armchair safari from the main deck at Nahimba, looking out over the waterhole and the, the pool, which is in this picture been drunk dry by late afternoon by these hundreds of elephants coming through. This is also a picture that every guest will get that stays at Nahimba from, you know, from June through November. And even before June, when you, you may not have the hundreds of elephants, but you'll have dozens of elephants and you'll likely get a similar picture. You just may not have the layers of elephants like this one has. But this is, this is Nahimba every night in the dry season, dinner with the elephants, having these kind of really exceptionally intimate experiences with these magnificent uh, beasts. The nine tents are all configured slightly differently. We have a couple that are um, meant for families. Uh, all of them do have outdoor showers and an indoor cloth hooded bathtub with flush toilets and running water in the sink. Rack rates are very competitive at 595 plus park fees um, in, uh, which are currently running about $20 per day. Each of the Envelo camps is very different from each other as you'll see. So they do pair well together. You don't get that uh, feeling of being in the same camp, just a different location. They all have a very different feel to them and provide a lot of diversity. The Nahimba concession is, is well known for several things. Um, it's the largest concession in Northern Wangi. Uh, it's a private concession, so there are no other vehicles that come into our concession. And it's known for this incredible pride of 15, I think maybe 16 lions now, uh, led by the matriarch horse, who you can see in the, the background here. And this uh, amazing female lion, lioness came to this concession about five or six years ago as a single female and eventually formed a pride. But uh, she, she began to learn how to take down small, young, and infirm elephants. And that became one of their, the calling cards of this particular pride, was killing elephants. It's a bit of a grisly trade. It's interesting, unique behavior. 
but it's something that is, um, you know, very unique to this pride of lions in Northern Wangi, thanks largely to the number of elephants and some topography that makes um, taking down, you know, elephants uh, possible um, by this pride of lions. But we call her horse uh, because as you can see in this picture, her shoulders here are just burly. She truly is a horse of a lion. And like I said, her pride now, I believe is about 16. And she's got some new cubs that were just born in the last few weeks. And here's a couple of pictures of them from, from August. So they were born, uh, I think, middle of the summer or into the into early August. Beautiful pride and horse. Again, look at those shoulders. She's absolutely a, an incredible burly lioness. This is uh, Vin, one of the coalition of two males that is a part of this pride as well. So got a beautiful coalition of two males plus the pride of, um, of uh, females and uh, younger males in this northern part of Wangi in the Nahimba concession. You're also not as likely to see leopards in Wangi as you would be in say the Sabi Sands in South Africa, even South Luangwa in Zambia. But up in the north here with these knotty acacia trees and some of the topography, the north is known for its rocky kopis uh, and these Mopani forest and, and thick knotty acacia trees that do attract leopards. They are definitely not as um, habituated as the leopards elsewhere, like I said, in, with say, for example, Sabi Sands, uh, but that is a good opportunity to see leopards up in the northern part of Wangi. This was, picture was taken about a month ago by Brendan Judge, one of our guides at Nahimba, just uh, about a five minute drive from the lodge at Granny's Pan, which is just the next door pan to uh, to the Nahimba Lodge. Another unique feature of Northern Wangi, as I mentioned, the topography, which attracts leopards um, and just makes for an interesting landscape. We also have very big dams or lakes up in the Northern part of the park. And these lakes, of course, mean that you have crocodiles. Um, so there's a very good chance to see crocodiles as well as huge, huge uh, pods of hippos in the northern part of Wangi. Another species you don't see a lot of elsewhere in Southern Africa is the roan antelope, a very unique, um, special, cool looking antelope that is fairly rare, but we have great numbers of them in Wangi and you're almost guaranteed to see them, you know, with two or three nights at Nahimba. This picture is obviously very dramatic. Um, and uh, the good news is, at least for the, the little roan there, is he only left uh, with a, a nose ache. Um, and uh, I guess it's bad news for the croc since he would have to find another meal, but, it was pictured mostly for the drama, but also to illustrate the point of these unique species, uh, as well as uh, the dams that uh, where uh, big um, crocs like this reside in the northern part of the park. During this, you know, COVID pandemic, obviously we've uh, not had a lot of visitors. We do have been getting some local visitors uh, since about July at, at uh, some of our camps, but because of the pandemic and the lack of visitors, we've tried to increase patrols, anti-poaching patrols in our areas. The national parks, um, uh, of course, want to help us with that, but uh, they are resource strapped as well. So we've actually joined forces with the national parks. There's Harris, the picture on the right, you see Harris on the far left and Brendan on the far right, two of our guides from the Himba joining um, the national park rangers on patrol in the northern part of the park, uh, including in the Nahimba concession. And uh, several months ago, they happened upon a pangolin there in the left, which is a, a pretty special find. Again, a pretty rare thing to see, but. Uh, but you do see them sometimes as these, guys, uh, as these guys found out on a patrol earlier this year. Another unique feature of the Nahimba concession is the Nahimba seeps. Now Wangi is uh, without very many natural sources of water. It's a whole nother webinar and one that I've done before uh, for the reasons for that. But most of Wangi's water is actually pumped water during the, the dry season. But there are a few uh, areas where there are some very small pockets of natural water. And one of them is the Nahimba seeps. And at the seeps, the water, the elephants dig into the sand and the water literally seeps into those holes where they suck it up one trunk full at a time. It's also good for walking. This is about a, a 10 or 15 kilometer walk. Uh, I'll say it's 10 kilometer walk at the most from the Nahimba Lodge. So a nice way to walk. There's some topography there as well where you can have a view looking down at the elephants as they're digging in the seeps. Also makes for a great spot for sundowners as well. We call it the elephant cathedral because unlike a water hole where you have elephants making lots of noise and trumpeting and jostling and getting aggressive, trying to get in to get water. For whatever reason at the seeps, they really are quiet and gentle and each takes their turn, has the opportunity to dig into the, into the soil, let that water seep in and patiently wait for a trunk full. They also use this soil, which is very mineral rich 
um, for uh, sunscreen for mineral baths as well. So you can see that behavior, which is also pretty unique, but just a wonderful place for a, a g and at the end of the day. And then couple that with some incredible sunsets here and the opportunities for these kind of silhouette photos. It's a pretty special, special location. So there's three nights, you know, two full days and, and three nights at Nahimba. We're now going to head from Nahimba in the northern part of the park down to Bomani and Camelthorn in the south, which is both camps entirely different than Nahimba. And the region and the landscapes of southern uh, Wangi are also entirely different from the north. While the north has kopis and some topography and those big lakes and thick Mopani, the south has the largest plains in Wangi, the, the uh, Ngamo plains. So the, the landscapes really complement each other well because they're quite different. Now going from Nahimba down to Bamani or Camelthorn, you have a couple of ways to do that. Um, you can fly. There's an airstrip at Bamani which serves both camps. You can, if you're coming from Victoria Falls, you can do a road transfer um, down to Bamani or Camelthorn. That's about a five hour transfer from all the way to Halfway House on the uh, Tarmac Road. And then it's an hour and a half um, through the Ngamo Forest to Bomani or Camelthorn. But the best way, in my opinion, to combine either Northern Wangi or to transfer from Victoria Falls down to Bomani or Camelthorn is to take our Elephant Express rail car. And you can see from Nahimba, it's about a two and a half to three hour game drive from the camp to Det Railway Station. From Victoria Falls, it's a two and a half hour drive down the tarmac road to Det. Generally, our, our guests will get there about 1.30 in the afternoon, and then we'll hop on the express for the two o'clock departure, which then heads down the side of Wangi National Park. Now, this is a railway line that Cecil Rhodes laid back in 1904. So there isn't an animal alive that remembers the days before the railway line. It's part of their environment. So it's a historic railway line, which is very unique. Uh, and it's something where it actually demarcates the eastern boundary of Wangi National Park. So you have really exceptional game viewing, as you can see from this picture here, uh, on your trip down to Bomani and Camelthorn. It also makes what would have been a transfer into an activity. Um, it is an absolutely unique, again, one of our experiential unique activities that guests absolutely love. Here's a picture of the Elephant Express. It's a trolley car that has been kitted out with two Land Cruiser engines on either end. That 80 kilometers of the tracks is completely dead straight between Det and our camps at um, Bomani and Camelthorn. The interiors of the Elephant Express are big, nice, comfortable captain's chairs with teak tables. On this afternoon departure, we serve lunch as well as lots of drinks um, for guests. There's a flush toilets on board. Great for kids and families. Kids uh, don't have to be cooped up in a Land Rover for a long transfer or shoved into an airplane for a, for a flight that they might be nervous about. They can roam around the Elephant Express. They can be enjoying snacks and drinks. They can drive the train, as you can see that young, young boy there in the lower left. And adults love it too. Again, kids can run around. They don't have to worry about kids. Or if they're traveling without their kids, they can enjoy uh, drinking and driving the train there, <laughs> as that woman's doing with her lion lager. But it's just great fun for all ages. We have a professional guide on board interpreting the wildlife that you're seeing. The train can stop, you can take pictures, and you do occasionally get the traffic jam with lions on the tracks or sable on the tracks there, cheetah on the tracks. And at the bottom line is it's just a really fun and unique way to go between either Victoria Falls or one of our, our Nahimba camp in the northern part of Wangi to get down to Bomani and Camelthorn. Now, Bomani and Camelthorn are in the same area. They're about 10 or 15 minutes away from each other on opposite sides of that corner of, of, of Wangi National Park. The activities between the two camps are exactly the same. You can do everything at Camelthorn that you can do at Bomani, but the camps themselves are entirely different. We'll talk about that here. Bomani Tented Lodge is your classic old school tented safari camp. For any safari purist that you have as a, as a guest, this is their type of camp. There are 10 tents uh, that look out over the plains or over the water hole. And then we have an 11th family suite, which is uh, tented as well with two in-suite bedrooms with a connecting lounge. There are no fences here. So lots and lots of wildlife like these cheetah roam through camp on a regular basis. Lions, elephants, buffaloes, plains game. It is definitely a wild and woolly safari camp. It may not be the best place for people who are a little bit nervous, 
who are expecting fences to keep out wildlife at, the, at their camps. Um, it is, again, for the old school, school safari purist, it truly is nirvana. We're aiming for the four-star level here um, for the tent interiors, all of which are the same depending on the, the tent sizing is a little bit different between some of the categories of tents, but the interiors are all aiming for that four-star level. The rack rates are super competitive at 470 up to 505. That 505 rate is for our family suite, which is those two in-suite bedrooms with connecting lounge, you get private vehicle and private guide, as well as a private butler. That's great for families up to six um, with two adults and you know four kids or two couples traveling as well. Works really well for, for that. Anybody that wants a little bit more privacy as it's set just a little bit away from the main lodge. We also do have a pool at this camp and the main lodge, which I don't have a picture of, but um, again, nice to have that pool for at the afternoon siesta time. Now, just next door, as I said, about 10, 15 minute drive from Bomani is the entirely different setting and an entirely different camp, although in the exact same area, that's Camelthorn Lodge. Instead of being out on the open plains, Camelthorn is set into this beautiful woodland around our namesake Camelthorn tree. There are eight what we call forest villas, a bit more upmarket as the price indicates. They're bright, they're airy. Um, they have a, a bathroom at, behind at this picture. Um, fireplaces as well. Um, Wangi does get chilly during the cold Wangi winter months, which are June and July. And that fireplace comes in really handy, warms up this, um, the stone and thatch villa very nicely. You don't necessarily have to have a bed full of hot water bottles at this camp because of that wonderful fireplace. And then there's also a nice deck outside with a plunge pool that looks out over the forest. You don't get big game in here because of the lack of, of water. Uh, you will get forest antelopes, diker and bushbuck and yala and the like. And then of course, great bird life here as well. But your large game generally does not come through camp. So it tends to be a nice camp for those that may be a little bit more nervous about game coming through camp. There are no fences either, but because of the woodland, it doesn't attract those bigger, the bigger um, wildlife. And uh, also works really nicely for families with smaller kids who may be a little bit nervous about having lions and, and elephants roaming around camp like at Bomani. But as I mentioned, activities here between the two camps are exactly the same. So this is one of our signature activities. We call it the lookup blind. It's at Stoffy's Pan, which is about a 10 minute game drive from either Camelthorn or Bom Bomani located inside the park. And here is where your amateur photographers can feel like natural geographic photographers, like pro photo photographers without having a crazy SLR zoom lens. These, um, this lookup blind is situated such that you have elephants that are five, 10 feet away from the blind when guests can get you know, photos with their iPhone with very little zoom. It's also very nice for families as well with young kids. Mom is here safe in the knowledge that her daughter is, is safe and protected inside the blind. It's a 25 foot steel shipping container that's buried right at water level. Um, but she's safe in here, even though she's only five feet away from these two ton elephant uh, bulls, as well as the little babies there. But she's getting amazing pictures with her iPhone there. You can get these kind of toenail photo photographs from the lookup blind without a big zoom. This picture here is not taken with a professional SLR. This is taken with a point and shoot with a tiny bit of zoom uh, without any Photoshop either. So these are the kind of amazing photos that amateurs can get from our lookup blind. And kind of one of our classic, you know, late morning, early afternoon activities would be, uh, you may have spent the morning in the, in the communities, learning about our community activities, and then into the park uh, for some game drives, finishing up at Stoffy's Pan for lunch, uh, al fresco right by the, right by the water hole as the elephants begin to come in for water as the, sun, as the afternoon sun begins to heat up. Elephants come in for water and we head from lunch down into the lookup line for a few hours of toenail photography. In addition to the uh, lookup blind and to the elephants, we have a lot of other great game in the southern part of the park. This is a, a pride now of I believe 15 lions uh, in the southern part of the park here led by this um, matriarch who has that very unique notched ear, who can be very recognizable. Um, so lots of lions here in the South. We also uh, have, have had wild dogs denning at the Bomani concession for the last several years. So you do have good wild dog numbers. We do work uh, closely with wild dog, or sorry, painted dog conservation uh, in protecting what is Africa's most dangerous, dan uh, endangered predator. And um, we've had some incredible wild dog encounters in the Southern part of the park. And then our cheetah, we have, two amazing cheetah 
the first here, um, well, not just two, but two amazing cheetah mothers, I should say, who have been really single-handedly repopulating Wangi's cheetah. This is Queenie here on the left, and this is a picture of Queenie with her five little furball cubs from about two or three years ago. And Queenie was able to raise four of these five cubs, which for cheetah is pretty exceptional to raise uh, that many, many cubs in an area with lots of lions. The predation on cheetah cubs is, is pretty, pretty uh, significant with, with lions in the area. But she managed, she, she raised four of them. And one of those four, she had three males and one female. And one of those four, we've uh, subsequently named Cindy. And Cindy recently um, had a litter of cubs herself. And uh, now we have a, a cousin coalition of males. These are two of Cindy's cubs, two males, uh, young adult males, and, uh, and one of Cindy's cubs that are now a, uh, this, this coalition of males in the southern part of the park. This picture was taken a little bit earlier this year in the, the late green season. So the cheetahs are in, in good numbers, especially in the south of the park where we have the Ngamo Plains, which is a great uh, place for, uh, for cheetah habitat, obviously having that open space for them to roam and to run. Another species of antelope that you don't see a lot of elsewhere in Southern Africa are the, is the beautiful um, sable antelope, which we do have strong numbers of, especially in Southern Wangi. See them a lot in this area near Bomani or Camelthorn or down by Josie Benini, or also on the Elephant Express tracks, as you saw uh, from a picture earlier in the presentation. So a good chance to see sable as well, which is not something you'll see in a lot of other um, safaris in Southern Africa. So we've done our three nights at either Bomani or Camelthorn. One thing I didn't dig into here in the short presentation is our community activities, which obviously right now we're, we're having to uh, evolve given the, the COVID situation, but going into the communities, meeting with local communities, um, going to the school and having real immersive non-choreographed uh, experiences in the communities is something that every guest comes away with um, absolutely loving uh, while staying at Bomani and Camelthorn. So it's a must do. It's really a must to stay three nights, which gives you the time to have a full day of, of safari activities, wildlife activities in the park, and then you know a half day uh, in, in the villages as well. We're gonna head now into the far south of the park to the most remote camp in Wangi to Josie Benini. Josie Benini. And Josie is about 65 kilometers from any other camp uh, in the park. So it truly is remote and off the grid, as this quote says. If you go on the TripAdvisor, uh, page for Josie, you're going to see all kinds of quotes of this ilk, um, as well as a lot of quotes of guests who came to Josie after being on a very high-end luxury five-star safari, visiting luxury camps elsewhere in Zimbabwe or in Botswana. And they came to Josie maybe um, with a little bit of trepidation. Their agent said, you know, trust me, you're going to love it. And they came away having, you know, Josie as the top camp of their entire trip. It was the place that delivered the most incredible memories and that they absolutely loved more than any other camp, even those that had um, you know, more traditional luxuries. And Josie really is all about the luxury of exclusivity. There's only five tents here in this far south remote part of the park. Uh, and um, you, like I said, are 65 kilometers away from any other camp. You're gonna see no other vehicles. And here, you know, it isn't about being a five-star camp. Um, it's about a five million star camp because of those incredible night skies. You saw the picture before of the star beds that we can do each of the tents. Uh, the beds are on wheels and can be rolled out onto the front of front deck of, of the tent for that built-in star bed. Tents are, you know, rustic um, dome tents. They, that said, you know, a five or a six foot five inch person can stand up inside of those tents. So they're very spacious. Um, and at the back there is a bathroom with a flush toilet and with running water in the sink. But then we do have bucket showers. So a kind of a quintessential old school safari, again, a tented safari purists uh, nirvana. This would, be, this would be it as well, along with, with Bomani. Rack rates are incredible, I think, considering the luxury of exclusivity one has here, the level of remoteness, and uh, the fact that you won't see any of your vehicles except ours in this area. 505 rack rates plus the park fees. Some of the unique activities we can do down here as well is, is uh, mountain biking. It's the only camp in Wangi where you can go mountain biking. This sand down in the southern part of the park is Kalahari sand that's blown in over the millennium and is now hard packed uh, by the wildlife. And it's actually great terrain um, and a great surface for mountain biking. 
The reality is most guests spend you know, 30 minutes to an hour biking around camp, but we do get the occasional um, intrepid cyclists like this family with teens who, who did a, a longer day of cycling down into the far south of the park with a picnic lunch and route. So it really just depends on the guests' um, interest and their, um, and their level of adrenaline and, and energy and how far they do want to travel. Josie doesn't have a main lodge. Your meals are served out underneath the stars around the campfire. Again, really a, a throwback to the old school days of safari, to the exploration days of safari. And, um, and I think this is one of the reasons why those guests who came here maybe with some trepidation, they feel almost as if they've achieved something quite great. They push their, the limits of, of uh, the, them, they push themselves you know, past what they thought would be their limits to do something so rustic and, and authentic. And they came away uh, feeling really good about themselves for having done it and having an absolutely exceptional time. We also have a look up blind here at Josie, which uh, these elephants in this part of the park are quite curious and you get these kind of elephant snout photos you don't necessarily get as many of these at the lookup blind at Bomani, but down here at Josie, these snout photos are, are fairly regular with elephants kind of being curious about who, who are these uh, humans that are um, snapping their cameras here a few feet away from us. And you get uh, elephants sticking their trunks in and taking a sniff. You can also stand on top of this blind and get these silhouette pictures, uh, which are pretty adventurous as well. There's Mark Butcher, the owner of Invelo, getting a a picture of uh, his, his silhouette on the snout of um, a, a two-ton bull elephant there. And then the occasional, you know, good luck with a, a rainbow um, uh, behind one of the elephants also taken from the lookup line with that really blue sky as well. Beautiful photo, uh, thanks to the positioning of the, of the lookup line at Josie. There's other game in the south as well. We've had this uh, resident lion, his name is Mvu. He's actually taken over last year the, the old abandoned ranger station at Josie Benini. Um, that's a whole nother story as well, which I did a webinar about um, earlier about the history of Josie. Um, there was a camp here in the late 90s, early 2000s, and there was a ranger station and uh, it was abandoned. And uh, this is the reason that Josie Benini camp, ours, the Embello camp to exist today, was to try to fill that gap that was left uh, for 15 years without a, a tourism presence in the south of the park. But that's another story for the other webinar but Amvu here took over that, uh, that old Josie Ranger Station, kind of made it into his own regal palace. And I'll finish off here that just to talk a little bit again about our communities and why we're even in this business, in this tourism business. And it's all for um, creating positive change in these local communities and empowering and incentivizing the local community to want to protect wildlife so we can preserve this incredible 5,000 square miles of, of wilderness here in Wangi National Park. Mbello has sourced and invested over 2.5, almost $3 million now in social services for these communities that live along the border of, of Wangi National Park. This picture here is uh, illustrative of the power of our community-based tourism projects. This is Camelthorn Lodge being built back in 2014. Um, there were approximately 85 people that were working to build the lodge. Of those men and women, 60 of them well over two thirds had never been paid for a day of work in their entire lives. These are subsistence farmers who had never been paid for a day of work in their lives. So you can see the power of being able to bring home money in your hand for the first time. These are 30, 40, 50 year old men and women who are finally after that many years getting paid for a hard day's work. So it's created this really strong bond between the lodge and Envelo and the local community. In addition, some of the uh, community projects that we've been um, working on over the past decade. Last couple of years has been a terrible drought in Southern Wangi. Crops have all failed. And last year in 2019, Mbello was serving over 27,000 school kids lunch every single day at 13 rural schools. That was 500,000 plus school meals during 2019, thanks to that drought. We did this, the school lunch program for about eight months at 13 schools every single day. We also this year uh, have dropped about 30,000 kilos of food aid for the hundreds of families in these areas. In addition, have just started up the school uh, lunch program again now that schools have reopened in uh, these, these villages bordering Wangi. And today, uh, I think we have served up upwards of 100,000 school lunches to students in, uh, in these rural 13 rural schools as well. 
We've drilled over 80 water wells for these communities and equipped them over the years. We're now converting a lot of these hand pumps to solar so that these, these girls uh, from, the, from the high school there don't have to go and fetch water and the ladies from the communities don't have to fetch water. We've built 15 classroom blocks. Some of these classrooms could hardly be called classrooms from you know, the Mugabe era where there were root, uh, holes in the roofs of the school or no roof at all. Kids were learning outside, sharing pencils, sharing benches. And here we actually have built and then equipped a classroom that looks like my daughter's first grade classroom here in Seattle. It's a proper learning environment where kids have a chance to actually learn and uh, better themselves and, and progress onward. One of our other programs that we do that is, um, doesn't get enough attention and credit is our Wangi Schools Project in partnership with Penguin Publishing in Cape Town, where we have, uh, Penguin has contributed 37,000 first edition textbooks to these rural schools on the border of Wangi Park, who in some cases were using textbooks that were 20, 30 years out of date. In addition, the founder of Wangi Schools Project has written three children's books that are set in these villages that, uh, that help the, the young children here to learn to read. And they're reading about their villages, about their lives, about elephants and lions and the challenges of, of living next to elephants and lions and having them come into their villages. Um, instead of reading donated books, which are always well-meaning, but not necessarily very useful for kids in these areas, donated books from Seattle, where we're talking about you know, a big city and about wolves and about bears, species which, of course, they never see in Zimbabwe. So an incredibly impactful program, helping with literacy uh, and improving just the general level of curriculum because of these uh, first edition textbooks from Penguin. So we thank them very much for that, for that help. Incidentally, you can buy two of those children's books on Amazon. So you can always ask me for uh, more information on that. And then our signature community program is the See and Smile Safari, where over the past uh, eight, nine years, we've treated over 27,000 patients. Uh, these are communities that prior to 2011 had never seen a dentist. And now today, nine years in, many of the students uh, and the kids who are nine, 10 years old coming to the dental clinics that happen every November are just like us, seeing a first world uh, dentist on an annual basis. And we've seen the number of procedures for each patient drop over the years as this uh, incredibly impactful program has been implemented. So kids like this today, many of them come in, get a little bit of, get a checkup, get their fluoride, and the dentist says, looks good. Here's your toothpaste and toothbrush. We'll see you again next year. And these are about 15 Italian and Spanish dentists that come down every single November to put on these clinics. We since in the last uh, three years added optometrists as well. So taking care of both teeth and eyes for these, uh, these rural communities who previously would have had no access to this kind of healthcare. And in terms of conservation, Mbello is pumping water at 19 water holes in the southern part of the park, by far the most of any safari operator in Wangi National Park. And we're taking care of up to 25% of Wangi's wildlife. And yet again this year, with the terrible drought that continues here, second year in a row, uh, the, the, the dry seasons are just getting longer and harsher. And that, that water is even more critical for the, for the health of our wildlife in Wangi. We've also started an anti-poaching unit called the Cobras, which is 19 um, men who have been sourced from local communities around the park and have been and trained up to an anti-poaching techniques. And they are not only helping to deal with any sort of poaching issues inside the park, which touch wood, haven't been, um, has seen a significant uptick here despite the pandemic, uh, but they're also dealing with human wildlife conflict issues, going into the communities, helping people, farmers who have lost crops uh, due to elephants incursions, or families who have lost uh, a donkey or a cow due to a lion coming into the community. They're helping them to, to deal with that loss, as well as to try to, you know, to mitigate those losses by chasing lions and keeping elephants away from the communities. In incredibly powerful and, and needed, needed work. And these are all locals from these communities who are now helping to teach their friends and family on how they can, um, they can protect their crops and protect their, their uh, livestock as well. So that's the Envelo story. It's a bit of a long one. I appreciate you, you sticking through it till the end. Uh, and I think it's best summarized in the, the classic three-legged stool metaphor. You know, we get visitors that come to Wangi and they want to see wildlife. That's why they come. They may not know it. They're, they're, what they'll tell stories about later is probably their, in, their, uh, 
uh, their interactions with the local community, but they come to Wangi because they think they want to see wildlife. So we have to have thriving wildlife. But in order to have that wildlife thriving inside the park, we cannot forget about the local communities. We have to empower and incentivize the local communities in our safari operations and through social service investments so that they will want to protect the wildlife that does make their lives a little bit harder. That elephant that does come in and, and eat their their corn crop, or that lion that comes in and kills a cow, significant financial loss for a family. They have to see the benefits beyond, uh, beyond those, those losses and the benefits that do come from tourism. So that three-legged stool, you've got to have all legs. So we have to keep the communities engaged and empowered. That will then keep the wildlife protected and thereby bring the visitors and the circle continues. Thank you so much for taking the time to learn more about Invelo's portfolio in Wangi National Park. If you have any questions, you can always um, email me, tad, T-A-D, at cusinicollection.com or visit cusinicollection.com on the web. Thank you.